It was in 1933 that a motorcycle racer, Erwin Baker, had crossed the United States from coast to coast in only 54 hours. This is 1933. <laughs> so he was nicknamed Cannonball, and then they had things called the Cannonball Run. And so then uh, in 1999, a British entrepreneur, Maximilian Cooper, created something called the Gumball Rally 3000 in honor of the... Uh, Cannonball Run, and I uh, guess in a way, uh, Aaron Baker. So, this is interesting. There's no tape. I thought I would cut through the thing, but you see these tape marks? There's no tape on here. I bought this online, and I now have a belief that this is a used model. So, first, this is a pretty stupid thing for them to do. They give you a box and they give you the blister but the blister cannot fit inside the box so most people would probably say this is wrong right this is just weird I mean it makes no sense to make this blister bigger than the box just stop paying you know don't have the box at all you know reduce the price a little bit and have less garbage in the world right this is just garbage this is just anger is me to have stupidity in this hobby and it happens all the time so sorry it's a negative review already QC number two so that's nice uh, at least it, maybe there's some good quality on this but we'll have to find out so in 19 in this let's see the packaging this is the gumball rally what year 20 it says back here 2016 gumball rally okay so in that year they raced from uh, Dublin to Bucharest and the drivers of these, uh, this exact car was David Coulthard and Jean Alessi, both ex-Formula One drivers. This whole gumball uh, rally is really just a way for rich people to drive and have a good time. Uh, the very first one in 1999 had an entry price of around $9,000. So yeah, if you can just throw away nine grand just to enter a race, then yes, you you pretty much have to have a, a large dispos disposable income. Not for me, I wish I could do it myself. If I had the money, I would do it myself, but I'd probably also kill myself doing something stupid in one of these cars. All right, well anyways, I'm playing it safe and just buying a 64 scale model of it because I am no Formula One driver. So I think you had some time to look at the photos the actual license plate matches so this is a very seems pretty accurate all right so for the car itself this uh, car here is called the C63 which is a little bit weird because uh, this has a 4 liter V8 and it's twin turbocharged making it over 500 horsepower 0 to 60 would be 3.9 seconds so it's a pretty fast car but the C63 name comes from the older uh, CLK, I think, that may have had a 6.3 liter uh, engine. So the name of this car just doesn't actually match the engine anymore. It's kind of strange, right? Okay, well, let's see here. We got this uh, printing here. Is it tampo printed or decal? Right now, I think these are tampo prints. From what I can tell, I, I don't know. So far, I don't see any air pockets below in any of the door panel gaps. Let's see, so we'll have to see. For now, I think they actually are tampo prints. The wheels are cool. I mean, they're obviously blue, but there's actually a star in in the hub of the wheel, a Mercedes uh, star there. So that looks good. No brakes though on these uh, blister pack. Uh, what is this thing called? It's a Global 64. It's not the Hobby 64, so it's a cheaper price range. But it, so far, it's looking pretty good. Um, let's go to the front here. We got some texture here on the casting. It's painted black, and the paint seems pretty good. It's not overrunning too much. Same here, and then it's got the silver paint as well, and it's well applied. The headlights do look good, you know, um, plastic, and then some details behind that plastic. The little blue on the chin, chin spoil here looks well done. And same with these tiny little molded in canards. I'm not even sure if they're really canards because they're very faint in their molding, you know, they're not sticking out a lot. But it, I guess it's pretty effective. And they don't really stick out a lot on the real car either. But they don't look super thick. 
because they're not actually cast into the body so much. Okay, top there. We got some black here on the hood. There's a little hood vent behind the radiator. And then uh, again, I kind of feel like this is all tampo print. Because I don't see any wrinkliness or like any clear plastic around the graphic. So that's good because long term it's not going to crack off like a decal would. And then uh, this is white, I think it's metallic. Yeah, it is. There's a little bit of flake in there, so that's good for longevity as well. It's really nice, actually. It looks like a, just a regular white, but upon closer inspection, it actually is a metallic. So that's, I like it. Okay, the wiper blades are sticking out, painted black, as well as the black of the window, and I think this is tampo printed as well. So that looks good. Up top, we got a little black in the rain gutter, and this little antenna bump here. And again, tampo printing. Going down here, a little more printing, and it all looks good, even on the wing here. Even on the wing is tampo printed. There's no decal wrinkliness. And that wing is not super thick plastic. It's actually quite thin. It's quite nicely done. You can also see there's a rear view mirror hanging up there. So that's a good detail for something like this. And uh, no defroster lines, which I like, because uh, you don't really see them on the real cars. Okay, the star here is printed nice, C63, what's over here, something in AMG I imagine. Definitely AMG, I don't know if that's a sponsorship for the race or if it actually belongs on a normal Mercedes. License plate matches up, so that's great, very realistic. Nice thick lights and they got the separation of the white. And it looks like there's molded detail behind this plastic, you can see some ridges back there. A little extra plastic flash there, but it's okay tiny I don't know if that's contaminant it feels smooth hmm, I guess it's fine it's under the clear coat okay uh, oh look at that really tiny little black here in this vent so they could have easily skipped that but it's there all right so the tail exhaust tips here hmm let's see well yeah they look good I mean they're painted silver but there's black in the middle and they're deep well, not super deep, but still, it looks dimensional, so that's good. A little texture in here. I don't know what this is. It's a passive vent, probably to cool off the diff, The diff, I'm, gu I'm guessing. It's a little bit of a diffuser effect here as well. It's screwed together, which is fantastic because you can fix problems or customize it. You know, wheel swaps, interior paint, that kind of stuff. The tires are nicely molded. Uh, this guy, I think all Tarmac uh, Globals roll. So that's good. This base is metal, so if you actually want to run this down a Hot Wheels track, you could. It seems a little too nice to be doing that, in my opinion, but I'm guessing maybe you guys do that, because a lot of people always ask, does it roll? There's some black paint here. Fuel filler door? I guess it's right here. I'm just looking again to see if there are any decals. No, this is all printed. So it's a bit of a mystery, because the hobby grade tarmac works generally all run decals which is not good why is it this less expensive version is running tampos which is good but the more expensive hobby ones you know are running an inferior technology with the decals it's a mystery it makes no sense tarmac works oh what the heck this is nice too this is a real sticker oh that was a real sticker i have to glue that back on or something later so that's a real reflector. And so again, my experience with Tarmac Hobby is they only have paint in the mirrors, but a, a reflective sticker is much more realistic, right? So, oh, is this rubbery? This is rubbery as well. So that's nice. I think uh, the Hobby ones are rigid. So this is a, simply a superior product to their more expensive line of models. Weird, right? Anyways, I don't know if anyone has a comment about that. It it does is a total oxymoron. It makes it's contradictory to general logic of doing business. Uh, look at this and the details on the inside also. All right, uh, let me try to hit the get that light focus zoom in here. So you got all this silver detail on the inside. You know, get the star on the wheel the silver rings on the gauges so that's fantastic uh, the seats are just black I really didn't expect any extra work on the inside of this thing because it's a blister pack it's just a you know 
it's not a hobby grade tarmac but it's got like all the even better detail than a hobby grade oh yeah right, so i guess this is a nitpick this mirror you know the, the blue is flaking off probably because this mirror is made of rubber but uh i can live with it uh, i'm just really happy that this thing actually has the shiny mirrors it has a rear view mirror and then it's got some silver on the inside the only thing that's missing really is uh you know there's no brake system that is something you would get on one of the hobby grade uh tarmacs but for the price man this thing is pretty awesome all right okay well let's compare it to a couple other uh clks or c coupes i guess uh, i think this is based off a of c series uh mercedes there's a picture of one of the rallies so obviously this is a bunch of wealthy people you know if you're racing around in one of those this is probably just disposable they're just like yeah if we total the thing or maybe they just left it wherever the race ended all right well anyways let's take a look here at the clk done by ucc coffee this is a freebie that came with some two cans of uh, japanese coffee uh, i bought it on ebay though it wasn't free for me but it's a pretty cool model. The only thing really bad about it is it has painted taillights, but as you see, they're actually pretty nice taillights for, for paint. It still has the clear headlights. This next one is a CLK DTM from, uh, well, I don't know what year, but it's uh, made by Kyosho. And so it's a full-on race car. And it seems to be the older generation. These seem to be older CLKs because they have the two rounder round headlights whereas this new tarmac is more the one single angular headlight anyways they're all good models uh and so i'm pretty happy to have them all in my collection just for fun i'm gonna throw in this matchbox no it's not matchbox it's a hot wheels and i put my own 3d wheels on there but it actually looks like it could be 164 scale that that hot wheels So let's set this guy spin on its own, racing across Europe apparently in, in this year. Well, it started out as a negative review. I was thinking it's going to be a disaster just based on the, the poor packaging decisions, but it turns out to be a fantastic model it's actually better than some of the the hobby grade ones minus you know there's no brake system but everything else for me is there I, I think it's fantastic I'm glad I got it so if you like uh, the Mercedes coupes you, you probably definitely want to pick this one up I know they have a normal street color like it's an orange and black racing stripe kind of car and I was tempted to get that but uh, I thought I'd go with this one because I just don't have many models with blue wheels, right? The color thing, color choice on this thing is it's a pretty crazy livery. So that combined with the gold uh, number and, and Gumball Rally logo, it works for me. Maybe garish for other people. All right, all right. It is a garish paint scheme, but it's different, so I like it. Okay, well, um, I guess maybe someday I'll get another CLK or some sort of C coupe or some sort of Mercedes coupe, and uh, hopefully you'll be around to see that review to come. All right, later days.